Greetings and salutations, welcome to question 3 of the level 2 structure and bonding 2019 exam paper. Um, without further ado, let's just get into it. So this is the last question of this um, 2019 exam and let's have a look. So question 3a, uh, we're looking at the chemical processes exothermic and endothermic, give a reason for your choice. So this is an um, achieved answer, very straightforward, because you have a negative change of enthalpy this is going to be an exothermic reaction because the delta H is negative. Okay, so one line answer, that's what we need. Let's move on to the next part. Uh, next part. Now, in the reaction above, carbon in the form of graphite can conduct electricity. The product carbon dioxide does not conduct electricity. Use your knowledge of structure and bonding to explain this observation. Okay, so this is an excellent question. So, like I mentioned before, with the solids, uh, when we're looking at the solids, there are these components you need to consider. The first thing that they tend to talk about is melting point and boiling point, which is not covered in this particular exam. And then you have malleability, which is covered in the previous video, I think it's um, question one. And then you have electrical conductivity, which is being covered right here. So th these are all excellent ideas. And the last one is solubility. So these are some of the, no, they normally take, as you can see, they took three out of the four ideas and you need to link these back to structure and bonding. So if you look at electrical conductivity, as, as soon as you talk about electrical conductivity, you must refer to the free moving charged particles okay so you must have free moving charged particles moving charged particles so these are your either your free moving electrons or free moving ions because you need these guys to carry charges graphite which is a, an um, the form of carbon. So this is a giant covalent network or extended covalent network, uh, giant covalent network. So for this particular type of solid, you only have three examples. So giant covalent network, uh, so and diamond and silicon dioxide. So in this case, we're looking at graphite and graphite is very unique. Each carbon is bonded to each C is bonded to three other C's, to three other C's. So you tend to form what we call a two-dimensional hexagonal ring, like a hexagonal layer. So you think about a carbon bonded to one carbon, three carbon, uh, sorry, two carbon, three carbons, and then this carbon is being bonded to um, three other carbons, and then this carbon bonded to three other carbons, this carbon bonded to three other carbons, and you can see how this will further extend into a giant covalent network. So I'm just going to do another, um, another one on this side. And hopefully this is obvious enough. And they tend to do this. So, they, so you're looking at layers of these rings. So this is a hex, hexagon, six-sided ring. And if you have, let's say, a book candy or some refill paper in front of you, think of these layers as one sheet of paper and graphite have lots and lots of sheets of paper. Okay, so if you buy like a 250 um, refill pad, that will last you for a while, but then if you look at graphite, you're looking at you know millions millions of these sheets. Okay, so each carbon is bonded to three other carbons, and between the layers, you have got a single delocalized electron per carbon atom that is mobile and can carry charge. So you're looking at layers, so you got sheets of paper one, then sheets of paper number two. So this is your, like say if I do a magnifying glass, I'm, I'm, this is like this particular structure, this particular layer. And then between the layers, you have these delocalized electrons of the carbons that can carry charge because so you tick this particular box so you have the free moving charge particles so they can carry charges now if you look at carbon dioxide this is a molecular solid it is held together by weak intermolecular forces they do not have free moving ions they do not have free moving electrons so they do not conduct electricity now this is actually a really really hidden question um, 
they ask you to talk about all observations and then at room temperature you made CO2 which is a gas so they actually want to in a way to talk about how is carbon um, in this case electrical conductivity is more important but if you look at CO2 in this particular example how does it um, become a gas at room temperature whereas graphite is a solid this is because CO2 has really low melting point and boiling point because it is a molecular solid okay so it is a molecular solid the force of attraction between the molecules is weak intermolecular forces and that is really weak in comparison to the covalent bonding between the atoms um, in giant covalent networks so covalent bonding is really, really strong weak in, uh, intermolecular forces are really weak therefore co2 is a gas at room temperature but it and it also doesn't conduct electricity because it doesn't have any of the free moving charged particles okay so this example we've actually covered all four but this one's kind of hidden in disguise and they did want to i don't think they specifically ask people to talk about this but um because like i said this is like a really hidden thing um but I th i'm pretty sure if you talked about this it might consider using this as um, additional evidence okay so here's a um, type down answers because i'm not going to write all these otherwise the video will be like an hour long um so you can pause the screen and just have a look at so, so this is essentially what i just mentioned just now it is very very um again lots of road learning you have to understand so you have to talk about the condition to conduct electricity what do you need to have and then you need to talk about what each of these structures what type of solid are they what type of bonding do they have and do they meet this particular criteria of electrical conductivity like in this case you have delocalized electron per one carbon whereas the co2 has no moving ions no moving electrons therefore you can't conduct electricity okay so this is an excellent question but like i said guys um it is always uh, always annoys me a little bit especially with my own students if you already know what the questions are going to ask you why can't you do them okay so that comes down to you know just spending a bit of time especially with the solids part guaranteed you will be hit with some sort of explanation questions either talking about the four things uh, the four things we talked about melting point boiling point malleability electrical conductivity and solubility okay so spend some time on those now here comes my favorite part because i um, don't like writing too much here's some calculations so um this are the enthalpy calculations now before you before we even look at the question whenever i see these i used to tell my guys to let's just uh, this again offline yeah tablets are hard to use um just just let's interpret these because what like say um as chemical form chemistry formulas like equations are universal languages everyone in the world understands it we don't have to speak the same language to understand this particular reaction so what it means let's translate this when you have two moles of magnesium reacting with one mole of oxygen you make two moles of magnesium oxide during the process you release 1203 kilojoules of energy okay so you have a ratio of two to one to two mole ratio and that give you negative 1203 kilojoules of energy so we want to calculate the mass of oxygen required to produce this much kilojoules of energy so when you have a question like these the key thing that um, i tell my students again hence you know and they find it quite helpful hence i'm doing it here as well you only looking at oxygen because you you know he says calculate the mass of oxygen i don't really care about magnesium or magnesium oxide they can do whatever they want i'm not really interested i just want to know how much oxygen i need to make 1804.5 kilojoules of energy i mean realistically you want to consider this and this as well but that's really high level of chem I mean, level three or even scholarship level of chemistry um we just we just try to keep it really simple in level two okay so let's think about this one mole of o2 makes 1203 kilojoules of energy okay so you need to just look at this number that's one mole is 1203 
I want to produce 1804.5 kilojoules of energy. How many moles of O2 do I need? So the mass, we want the answers in mass, in grams. We don't want moles because not because not everyone understands what moles are. And now if you have this ratio, if you're quite savvy with math, you should be able to solve this quite easily. If you're not so good with mathematics, this is what I tend to do. Cross multiply. So that means 1804.5 multiplied by 1, which is itself, equals 1203 multiplied by the number that we don't know. We can make x. So x will be 1804.5 divided by 1203. And then you should get a number of 1.5 moles. So 1.5 moles. That's nice. That's not the final answer though, because what did we figure out? We figured out the mole. Mole equals small m divided by big M. So if we know the if we know the mole, if we know the molar mass, you always know the molar mass. Uh, you always know the molar mass, guys. How do we figure out the mass? Mass equals n times the big M. So that's going to be 1.5 times 16, which gives you a 48.0 grams of CO um, of O2. Okay, so that is a question how to how you can do these. So just the key thing is, guys, remember. If, if I change a question, like say, if I instead of talking about oxygen, if I talked about MgO, you need to understand, like, no, why don't we do MgO? Why don't we do MgO? Like say, if we do MgO, two moles of MgO will be 1203. Like say, if we use this number as well, how much energy are we going to get per one mole of MgO? So you can just cross multiply here as well. So you just go two times that equals that, uh, multiply by the x, and you can solve x. And I tend to, so just don't forget this number, or I tend to tell my students, just think about two moles is 1203, how much is one mole? And then if you know the per mole value, you can then do the same thing as we did here. Okay, but that's not part of the question that we're looking at here. Um, so I'll just rub it out and hopefully don't confuse you in the process. Okay. All right, so the typical question, the other typical question that you tend to get, you always get um, questions like these. They give you the kilojoules or they give you the grams. So you just do the opposite. If we give you the grams, and this is, um, I mentioned this in one of the videos before, never ever leave the question blank. If you know the mass, you always know the mole. Okay, because we give you the molar mass, you get 100 grams of MgO, calculate the energy change. That means I have 100 grams the molar mass is 40.3 grams per mole. You don't need to include units in your calculation, but this is gonna give me 2.48 moles, okay? Now, let's go back to where we were before. So two, uh, this is actually quite useful. Go back to, so we're, now we're looking at, um, now we're looking at two MGO. We're looking at two MGO. So two MGO is negative 1203. So that means one moles of MgO is negative 1203 divided by two, because that's per mole, which is gonna give you negative 601.5 kilojoules. And then we can use this number to cross multiply, and I'm running out of space a little bit. So one mole is 601.5. How many moles do I have? This is per mole, so one mole is 6 over 1.5, I have 2.48 moles, and I just use that to multiply by negative 6 over 1.5. You can, um, and then you get um, negative 1490 kilojoules rounded to three significant figures. Okay, so this is how much energy is released. And just on significant figures, um, if, like say, this answer is actually, so this is just not in, this is um, just looking at significant figures. This is actually the final answer, 1914.192.5 uh, kilojoules. How do we round to three as if? You start counting from the first non-zero number. So you start counting from one, two, three, and you round. So this is smaller than four, uh, smaller than five. So it'll be one, four, nine, zero kilojoules. Okay. So that's how you round to three SF. It is incredibly important that you keep units in your final answers, and it's incredibly important to make sure it's rounded correctly. Okay. So that's that part.
Now, last one, so more calculations. Yay, a lot of calculations, that means less writing. Okay, so let's think about this. Lots of blah, 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 blah. I'm not gonna bother reading those. Let's just, this is the key thing. And then this is the key thing. Now, in chem, all the numbers that we give you, you tend to need to use them at least once. Mostly just once, don't double dip, but um, once is enough, we got the molar mass. Okay, so let's th think about this. So first thing first, what do we have? We have a product plant produces 16, uh, 65,000 grams of aluminium per minute. That's a lot of, um, that's a lot of um, aluminium. And then calculate how much energy is required per hour of production is um, required. How much energy is required? Okay, so you have 65,000 per minute. So I need to know how many grams per hour because they're asking you per hour this is per minute so first thing first I need to figure out this so it'll be three nine zero 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 two zero lots of zeros this is how many grams per hour so we have the grams remember grams to a chemist is useless we always convert the grams to moles so it'll be three nine oh 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 divided by the molar mass which is 27 then you have a lot of moles okay so which is about 140 uh, 144,044 moles okay now let's think about let's go back to where we were before so how much energy is required da, da, da. okay let's come back to our aluminium per minute so our aluminium is right here so four moles of aluminium is three, three fifty kilojoules. That means if I want one mole of aluminium, you'll be three, three fifty divided by four. And that's how much energy that will give me um, per, what do you call it? That's how much energy um, there will be um, per one mole of aluminium. Okay, so how many moles of aluminium do I have? I have this many. So it would just be one, four, 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 four times three, three, fifty divided by four. And that's gonna give you a number of 1.21 times 10 to the power of eight kilojoules, which is rounded to three SF. I mean, it's not really nice to give you a number this big, but um, in short, if you didn't know what, so on, on, on your calculator, it may look like this. If you're not so confident with your calculation, it may look like 1.21 E8. So the E just stands for 10 to the power of eight. Okay, so it's a very similar concept as what we had just now, but the tricky part is here. First thing first, per minute, this is per hour. That's why I times by 60. I know how many grams I have. And then if I know the grams, I know the moles. Use the, use the grams divided by the molar mass to give you how many moles you have. And then go back to the equation. I don't care about the aluminum. See, I didn't even read this. I didn't even read that. Um, I just, that's just fillers, okay? They're just, they're just there to confuse you. Just look at the equation. How much aluminum are we talking about? So this is the thing I want. I want, I want four moles is 3350. So one mole is that number divided by four. I need to have this many moles. This is how much can, yeah, this is how much energy per one mole. Multiply the two together and, and, and then you have the kilojoules required. Okay, so hopefully that's um, helpful. I hope has been helpful um, with your structure and bonding. I will definitely come back and do a few more um, structure and bonding um, tutorials going through some old exams. I'll probably do 2018 next. Um, but um, I will be focusing on the, with the level ones and level three because I want I just want everyone to have something to to start with at the beginning, and um, we can work on the other ones. So I'll be ma making more videos during the school holidays. Um, but otherwise, same thing as always. If you can subscribe, share this with your um, with your classmates, leave a like, leave a comment. They'll you know help help the channel grow. Um, you know, um, try to beat the. YouTube algorithm and get the um, videos more out there. That will be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, take care, study hard, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.